Wrong scene. <laughs> Welcome oh, to the stream. Happy Thursday night. <laughs> we're having hot pot. And we're talking board games. Andrew and I have been going through our house and decluttering. Um, hi, Slackfish. And um, it's a big mess. It's it's the stage where. It's gonna be a mess before it gets better. <laughs> so we were like, instead of streaming a game, we should just eat food. <laughs> and then Andrew's like, and then I can talk about the games I bought or and cold. my regrets. What? And what yeah, you're gonna cold. get rid of? Yeah, what we're getting rid of. Yeah. I don't Andrew regret does. buying any of them. Oh yeah, Andrew has no regrets. No regrets. Only that he doesn't have enough friends to play these games with. Enough friends enough and enough time. Yeah. Uh, Slackwish, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, how was your day? We are making hot pot, Andrew's favorite meal of all time. Oh yeah. Um, this is a COVID purchase. <laughs> yeah, our own hot pot setup. Uh, because we're like, we're not going to any hot pot places anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, legends. What are you having for dinner? We're having hot pot. I want to go there for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a long, uh, I think it would be boat ride or flight for you. Um, um, but there's definitely enough food. Oh, I keep wondering, like, what's under my name? It looks like cauliflower, but it's... Um, it's the veggies. It's the veggies. So Here's proof that we have veggies. We were told... Andrew's putting only meat right now. But, yeah. But Amanda Panda told us... To, to do the meat, the meat, um, what is it? The meat First. line? The meat, um, the meat First. event. The meat scene. The opening act be meat. So that your broth is super tasty for your other um, flavors. Mm. Also, I always want noodles. That's my favorite part, part about Hot Pot. But it makes the sauce really starchy. Um, mm. But I'm waiting for the meatballs. Yeah. Chama, yes, deciding games for the swap meet. Behind me. Yes. Oh, wait, wait. Behind me, you can see the stacks. The and stacks on the stacks, stacks on stacks. On stacks. And uh, I sent a picture earlier to um, uh, Casey from Brain in a Jar. Um, Casey of Brain in a Jar. Yes, Casey of Brain, Brain in a Jar. Because uh, she'll also be at the swap meet. And her response was, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel, you know, it's always good to impress other other board gamers with how many games I'm getting rid of, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Legend said, I started the solo campaign yesterday for Under Falling Tide. I blame Brandon and Jar. <laughs> how, do you, um, how do you like it? Ooh. I want, is this meat ready? This is always my... I'm always so impatient. Um, and then I can't keep up suddenly. Sorry, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna move this up here. Whoa! Oh yeah, there we go. I'm gonna move the chat. Because Here's the noodles and the tofu it. and the mushrooms. The veggies. Uh, are veggies. Over here. We got a giant meat... You, did you put all the meatballs in I there? took out... Yeah. Okay. Well... Probably not get through all of them. Okay. <laughs> it's like a pound of meatballs. <laughs> Among like other, uh, other meats. Well, I should, when we're done with the meatballs, we should put it back because it's a warm room here. Yes. Andrew um, is not wearing the, the correct, um, what's it called? Hot pot attire, which is black. But he's wearing a dark shirt, which is good. It says spicy ramen. It is. This isn't ramen. Yeah, come on. But ramen is soup, and so is hot pot. That's true. And this is spicy soup. But so. you want to have so that all the spicy stuff is not getting on your clothes. Destiny shirt. Yes. Yeah. Nice. You got the reference. Ooh, looks good, guy. Says Variga. Variga. Welcome to the stream. Uh, um, yeah. So I'm excited. It smells good. It's a mix. Um, the hot pot like broth is a different broth than we did the last time we did hot pot on stream. So we're curious about if it's any better. Yeah. Um, it was easier and in some ways 
the easier option is the better option for us <laughs> these days. So we got the little sheep like pre-made pack this time. So previously our last hot pot we made, we got a I think it's um, some of this is yeah, ready. I think, I'm I think going. It's good. Uh the last hot pot we made, it was um a, it was just the chili oils, so we had to prepare uh, like the ginger and the bay, uh, the bay leaves and uh, the uh, white peppercorns um, and a bunch of other stuff. So we had to fry together um, garlic. Um, it was very tasty. And so it was probably going to be more fresh than this is going to taste because this was a lot of powders and, and stuff and oils that just were packaged. Uh, but this one <clears> took <throat> two minutes. To make uh, whatever, however long it takes to boil water, um, and the other one took, you know, thirty to forty minutes. So yeah, for that reason alone, we were excited. I'll probably keep both in our in our, our, repertoire our repertoire for emergency hot pot. You, you know, just boil water, or if you want to get really fancy with your broth. Yeah, I don't think the other one would have worked with our schedule today. Mm -mm. So. We've been busy cleaning our house, um, donating things or putting things in donate piles, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, preparing our giant stack of war games to hopefully sell this weekend um, at the, the board game swap meet. Also, for those in chat, have you ever gone to a board game swap meet before? Or a place where people are selling selling board games? Um, um, if you go and you see Andrew, he will give you a good deal because Andrew. Yeah, if you recognize us as board game spam <laughs> <laughs> while we're there, I definitely. Oh, on the East Coast. Awesome. How long did you have your board game store? Um, we have a friend that just we opened We have a friend up. who just opened one this month, actually. Last week. It was it's been very opening. exciting. Yeah. It's been exciting to to see that going on. It's not the easiest time to, to do that, but it's really cool. Yeah, we have a lot of games, but I think one of the big things is ever since we've had our kid and mm -hmm. we're still in the same apartment, we just don't have a whole lot of space. So it was a, it was a, a call of of function and desperation because there's just too many games and we still have a lot of games which is probably a sign that we had way too many if we still have this much to <laughs> yeah we still we still have a full collection after this so some of the ones that are going one that i'm still not 100 percent sure about is um antiquity it's a splatter game he's looking for people to um to talk him off the ledge to sell it so, so you, I have three splatter games. I have Bus, Food Chain Magnate, uh, oh no, I have four. You should not Roads bring your boats, games near the, the board. Roads and Boats, <laughs> and, um, and then Antiquity. And I've played none of them. And last year I got way into the idea of splatter games. And um, I haven't been able to get any of them to the table. Obviously the last year it's been a bit... A different year, so it's not like I can really blame that. But also, what are anyways, four is a lot. <laughs> so I'm keeping food chain magnate, keep, keeping roads and boats, yeah, keeping well, bus. Antiquity, I feel like people don't talk a lot about, and although it looks really cool, and I know I'd like it, I just I don't know if we have the time to to dig into that. Like one of those games, I feel like could be our main game for like a month mm -hmm. or longer. Five years. <laughs> John, have you ever regretted selling a game? Yes. <laughs> the, there's a story that's told often on this channel. Last stream, actually, even. It it always hurts my heart whenever Andrew tells this story. Um, um, it was, wait, before uh, you jump into that, yeah. my friend took ownership of our game store here last March. Oh wow! Is Where's that, that the is that the store that has the um that has the spam? Plushy Legends and Slackfish says with the red color on PS side and the blue behind Andrew, I'm getting a strong it's a wonderful world color vibe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny because I 
wouldn't know what that was, Slackfish, but we were just looking at our board game collection, and I was looking at it, and I was like, I haven't heard about this game, but I think it's, not that I haven't heard about it, but I think the It's a Wonderful World is, the, is like, in other things, right? Like that term or that name. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually understand that reference. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a very striking cover. Um... Ooh, any chance you guys got a list? Uh, we Andrew don't... can make a list. The list was in the math trade, uh, but it's not like exportable, unfortunately. Ooh. But I will be kind of picking them up and showing them once we're done eating. Um, if you're if you're still awake. That's but the... <laughs> that might be a while. Hot pot is a long meal. Well, for two people, it's not so long. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so if uh, if you're still around, otherwise the vod will be available. You can kind of zoom through it, go go quickly through it. But, um. What games do you like? Yeah, what games do you like? I've got... <laughs> There's a lot here. There's a lot Hi, here. the more I know it's a different store that has the spam plushie. Hmm. Speaking of spam plushies... <clears throat> we... just got... a spam... Funko Pop. Pop. Funko Pop. It's so cute! <laughs> so this might be replacing our um, raid idol. Or it might be about? joining or the raid joining idol. joining the raid idol. <laughs> I feel um, bad for replacing the raid idol when it was our fault for it falling and breaking. I mean, that's true. Mm -hmm. It was definitely our fault. <laughs> um, but you should start talking through... Some of these games, yeah. Through the games. I can get this meatball. If I can get the meatball. So a game I'm surprised to see in there. And I'm like, are you sure, Andrew? Hmm. And I wonder why you're doing this. Is Senji. You like Senji. Uh, I like Senji. It's out of print. Probably won't come back. But maybe someday. Whoa. R.I.P. Yeah. Which is always the scariest ones to sell. Uh, Senji, if anyone doesn't know, and the hint is, Andrew says this because he the the game that he did regret selling. We sorry, we talked about it and then we didn't finish the story. Oh. He sold Battlestar Galactica because we were kind of getting out of the hobby, and then we didn't really know that it was really. I can't tell the yeah, story. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's interesting. This version of the story is interesting. I sold it right before it went out of print. Um, and the worst part, it's not even that I that I sold Battlestar Galactica because it's expensive and I can, I can get it again. Which I'm actually getting it again. Um, in this math trade. In this math trade, which I'm really excited about. It's a Homeward Bound moment. It's when Shadow, Sassy, Chance, is that his name? Mm -hmm. They return home. And Andrew's gonna like hug this Battlestar Galactica board game and be like, "Welcome home." But I the, missed you. The real tragedy was I had every expansion, and I sold all the expansions with it, and that is what really increased. Like the expansions are prohibitively expensive; they're like two hundred dollars a pop. Or oh more, my gosh! Just to try to get. We one. can't talk about it anymore. No, yeah. just <laughs> I've talked about it enough. I feel like I'm. You work through it. it. You work through it. Good. We're getting the, our own copy of the game again, so. It's also yeah. related to when we started dating. That show is like connected to when we started dating. It's like one of the shows we watched together when we were long distance. Yeah. So, but um. Anyway, sorry. Senji, you're getting rid of Senji. Uh, all right. So Senji. Um. All right. Legend says. Oh, sorry. Are we gonna have Andrew hug the SGN stream? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I think he, we'll it will be the opening shot. <laughs> it will be, um, we'll, we'll have to record it and it will be an alert. So. <laughs> John, I'm sorry to bring up the bad memories. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, that's it's okay. okay. Yeah. I end up talking about it pretty often on stream just because it's such a... The it's people, the, the, the example people of that why know, you don't... <laughs> yeah, the people that know, they feel it at a guttural level. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm getting it back. Slowly, maybe I'll get the expansions. Maybe I'll just play with the expansions with someone someday. I don't know. The base game is good enough, so. That but was yeah, like the, me uh... with Space Hulk Death Angel. Oh, no. 
Yeah, and it's like, and I thought at the time I was like, and I don't Andrew know anyone. Feels that at a visceral level. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, at the time I thought that none of my friends were interested in playing it. It was like a month after I I sold it that I got a text from a friend that said we should play Battlestar Galactic. I hear it's a good game. <laughs> It's like, no, I've had this for like three years. Never got played. But I have a friend that has a copy as well. So it wasn't, that was the other reason I sold it. Was because it was within your friend group. Mm -hmm. so, and we weren't at that time playing very many board games. Yeah. But anyways, we've talked about this a lot. So talk, yeah. tell me about your, your, your reason why Senji is in that pile. I like Senji. Um, that's one that I might not price super, super low. And if someone wants it, I'll sell it. And if they don't, I'll keep it. Because I could go either way on that one. Mm. Um, but Senji is a negotiation game. Um, and the reason I'm getting rid of that one is I feel like... Um, Battle of Rokugan kind of replaces it for me. Ooh, I love Battle for Rokugan. Yeah. We played it with a friend from my high school. We hadn't seen her in a while, and we were just meeting her husband for the like first time, or maybe second time. Like this was the first time we were like hanging out with them specifically, mm -hmm. and we played Battle for Rokugan with him. He had only played, I'm sure it was Catan that he had. Mention. He played one other yeah, game. Yeah, a couple. He only played a couple of games. So it was in one of college. his first hobby games. And he, w while we were playing, was freaking out. This is Battle for Rokugan because he was just like, "Where was this in college? Where was this when I was like living very close to my friends?" <laughs> He's like, "We would probably play this every week if I was, um, if this was like ten years earlier or whatever." Mm -hmm. And it was just one of the Battle for Rokugan. I feel like has a special place in my heart just because. It was fun to introduce someone to modern board games and like I feel like we didn't know him very well other than like ooh other than kind of what we These heard from my friend. Hard to get. And she was she gave us like Andrew found a perfect match for this person that we just met. So it was like kind of a fun like the board the, the game within the board game night is finding <laughs> a good fit for your friends, especially someone you don't know. Yeah. But so that was really fun. So you're I, saying Battle for Ogagon is it's fitting a different or the same space as Senji? If it, I think so. Senji, um, I think is is not bad. I think it's a clean design and and the negotiations a lot of fun in it. But I have a lot of games that have a lot of negotiation negotiating. Because you and guys just, love them. You and your friends love them. Yeah, but um, I just see myself picking the Battle for Ogagon. First. Mm. And I have picked it over it in the past, so. Um, <laughs> Gosh, because... Liam, Andrew got the meatball. I did. And is it cooked? That was the one I didn't get a meatball yet because I want to make sure. I mean, it's cooked. been in there this whole time. 19 minutes. There's one IIRC. There's three IIRCs. Or there's three in there. What's IIRC? Let's see. Expansions, super short print. I sold my copy. Do you know how many expansions I have the game? If I call correctly, okay. If I ever call correctly. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's three expansions. Yes, oh, I got it. Teriyaki cheeseburger. Yum. We had teriyaki chicken. Meatballs are good. Burger. Um, just last week at Andrew's parents' retirement party. It's mm -hmm. very tasty. Okay, I'm scared for this. They're hard to get out. Yeah. They're also hard to get because people are watching. Mm -hmm. Everyone, don't look. I can bring you a spoon. No, I'm gonna do a different technique. Haha. <laughs> Hi, Deadpan! Um, Legends is debating onion rings or french fries. Andrew is a big fan of onion rings. I still... If they're good. Good onion rings. I've um, only in, in recent years have I gotten into onion rings. But it really is kind of a mood. What kind of mood are you in, Legends? Um, so we talked about Senji. Um... So yeah, the Senji is just, uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar, it's an older game that is, it's like a streamlined diplomacy. Um, they really kind of took the essence of diplomacy and, and got it down to like an hour and a half game instead of 
an all day thing. Um, and then I feel like which you loved growing up. Um, right? You have good stories about it, I guess. I have maybe. one story about it of me rage quitting. Okay, <laughs> Andrew does not love it. I just remember that I story. I liked diplomacy enough, um, but it yeah, I, it's more for the stories. It's the the drama of it that is exciting. Is that the only game you've almost rage quit? Because I've almost rage quit. War of the Ring. <laughs> I mean, I was a high schooler, but uh, I, I did, was an adult. <laughs> I, I did rage quit it. I I didn't almost. I left. Well, I had been backstabbed, and I had only a couple guys left. So I said, "I'm marching my soldiers into the ocean. Anyone can have my land back." But there was already, I think, two one person, one or two people that were out of the game because there's player elimination, in it. and so I wanted to hang out with them. Um, as well. Ooh, yeah, I really don't don't rage to quit a game unless, you know, there's player elimination and it can account for it, I guess. But. Chama, Istanbul! Yes, Istanbul's on the list. Which I love in Istanbul. You see it? Is Istanbul in there? Yeah. Um, and, um, oh wait, where did they see it? It's not on the top here. Are you just talking about Istanbul, or do you see it? Because we cannot even see it. It is on the list. Oh, it is on the list? Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, it's here, yeah. Um, anyways, Istanbul. Uh, yeah, I just, we haven't played it for years. Uh, middle of the right pile. Uh, oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> Good eye. Good eye. Uh, this is going to be a game with chat where they point out games and then we cannot find it. We're just like staring at it. It's just like, where is the... Um, I really enjoy it. Hi, board game feast. I yes, hot it's, pot. Oh yeah. I love that Istanbul is a light game, uh, and it's easy to teach. But I think the the theme ha is working against it in most cases. Um, I have no problem with the theme, but uh, it's hard to convince people to play. And um, as much as I like it. I haven't played it in probably five years, and we've had it for a long time, so. Uh, I think we've had our day with it. Mm -hmm. We had a time, it was a good run, mm -hmm. and now it... Um... <laughs> like, Andrew Strat is still on, even though the oh, thing no. is... <laughs> what game was that for? Is willing to let the kids get hurt in order to give them the best possible clues. Oh, that was for... Um... Oh, um, that was for the Snally Gas yeah. situation. <laughs> we haven't updated it for a little while. Um, also, if... Um, Anyone is looking for board game plus food related content, board check out Feast. Board Game Feast in the chat. Um, they recently did a Lost Ruins of Arnak stream, it and it great. was great. Yeah. It was so great that Andrew was watching it while we were with other people. <laughs> <laughs> we were over at Pia's Cousins. And no, when we were, when we're over at my cousins, I feel like um, split attention is, is very um, acceptable acceptable, and not a social, like, faux pas. <laughs> Andrew kept being like, look at these biscuits! <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're editing the VOD right now? Ooh, nice! Yay. That's something we should do someday. <laughs> Edit the VOD. Or VODs. We just sideload our VOD straight into um, I don't know YouTube. why we do it. I don't know why. That's n it's nice to have the archive just for ourselves. Um, We're gonna get to the noodles next because I really want I the my favorite part of, about Hot Pot is the noodles. Alright, let's do some noodles. We're doing yeah. tofu and noodles. Noodles! Favorites. Noodles, 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 noodles. Get ready for the starch. For the start, for the the sauce to get real starchy. <laughs> Not too many though, because um, then it gets too, it gets out of hand quick. So right. tomorrow I'm playing Shia Legends of the Drift for the first time. Oh, I, yay! I know many stories about Shia. I've never played it, but I remember them because it's they fun. are talked about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I really like Shia. Um, I like that. Uh, you can kind of go the the push your luck route, or you can take a more strategic, even killed route, and, and then all the things that can happen are pretty wild, which is fun. 
uh, I've had friends, you know, jump into a star by accident and, um, uh, you know, get get attacked by the NPCs that are running around. It's a, she is a great game. That one is one that stayed in my collection for a long time. Um, yeah, so what did, where were we at? Oh, so, a fantasy adventure game later this year from the same company. Yes. There are, well, is it still on Kickstarter? It was on Kickstarter, or is it coming to Kickstarter? I can't remember. And Borgen Feast says, dang, I'm so jealous. I picked up Shia during lockdown, but haven't been haven't gotten it to the table yet. Yeah, they they played it. You guys played it a lot. It's like one of the games that prior to streaming, we didn't really replay a whole lot of games, and that was one that like played like you guys mm -hmm. played multiple times. I think it's because it's like really interesting and dramatic, and then so the people who weren't at the original game are like, oh. Like, that sounds interesting, like, I want to play, or, like, the stories were so interesting that then, like, they keep coming mm -hmm. up, and then people are like, oh, we should play it again. I want to play it. I want to yeah. try it. It's, you know what? Strategically, it's it. quite light. It's not, like, a heavy, like, <gasps> brain. Sounds perfect Lots of dice for rolling. Me. It is a little bit of a learning curve, but, um, because it's light, it was, it was pretty casual. It was usually when we wanted to do, like, a more casual game night, where it's like, oh, it's a longer game. But it's... It's long, but it's light. But it's lighter. Light. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. lighter. Yeah. But and I, I think it's light like... in the way... Strategically light. It's not... It still takes a bit to learn, because there's so many things that you can do. But on your turn, you're only ever really doing something pretty simple. I think what I like about those those um, strategic games... Or not strategic... The like, lighter games is that I feel like it brings in a couple of different players. It, at least in our friend group, that like wouldn't do a longer game. It but... is a longer game, though. No, no, like, wouldn't do a, sorry, I wouldn't do a heavier weight game. Mm. You know? So it's like, they're interested when you guys talk about it, but it's like, ah, uh, it's usually like a... They I decide. wouldn't say it's necessarily a great fit for that. Just oh. because, like I said, but it, is a, it is a bit of a learning curve. Oh. But, but strategically, once you've learned the game, you can kind of... Oh, got it. got it. Got it, So we, we specifically made that mistake before... And invited some people who don't like to learn games oh, a lot. Oh, okay. And uh, it was a bad fit. Yeah. Okay. I withdraw everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just don't want that to get that wrong. A good thing, though, like in terms of this pile, because this is kind of our, would you say our third or our second big wave of getting rid of games? Um, our third. 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 Or not getting rid, just trimming it down to the best ones. Yeah, trying um, to have the right games. I think it, it is nice to see that um, there are games... Like, I used to be super impulsive with games, and then we'll be at a game shop, and I'm like, I want, a, I want this one! And Andrew, so desperate to, like, find a game that I like, um, is like, sure! And then we end up, like, playing it, and then we're like, that's okay. Um... So I feel like I've learned my lesson. Ooh, rehoming oh. games. Rehoming. <laughs> <laughs> I feel That's like so um, I I'm like looking at this list. I'm very proud that I didn't do as much um, like impulse buys. I also think I know what I like more. Mm. Um, and also I start at my favorite game. I think of all time. I've decided at least so far right now is Rococo. So. And that's an expensive game, but it was like, mm. I think I realized like that's the game that if I bought that game and then didn't buy a bunch of like little 20, 40 or to $40 ones that were like, okay, mm. then like I could justify big purchases like with Coco. But the thing is, <laughs> it's hard to play. You got to play it to know. I don't know. I know. It's tough because, because we are the people in our circles that generally buys games it's like we can't try without buying so i mean even unless just we travel to a place with a a big library a library which isn't yeah. um something we can do all the time yeah. um if he says send him to a farm with a nice big <laughs> games room to run around in <laughs> you know i mean that's all i really care about as long as these games find places that people are playing them. I'm not trying to make a lot of money when I try to when I do these things. Also, because you you had fun we, buying them and mm -hmm. collecting them and 
we were talking with uh, Game Freak Geek Girl yesterday, uh, Monique, and um, she was saying that she oftentimes donates her games, which I, I hadn't heard of people doing before. I was like, oh, just, I didn't realize people would accept them. Mm -hmm. um, I thought they were too niche. So whatever I don't sell um, and that I, I mean, I'll probably, if I don't sell some things that are on, I'm on the fence about, um, I'll, I'll keep those, but um, everything else I think I might try to. Yeah, I think it's our because usually we do a lot of giving, um, like gifting our games, like mm -hmm. the games that we really like, but again, we are always looking for a home that, you know, more people will play them, especially if like, we just have too many, so even if we like something, we're like, oh, this cousin's gonna love it, and they're gonna play it yeah, every, we every weekend, you know? We usually do that when we bring them to the Philippines, but that's not. But an since we're yeah, too. since we haven't tr traveled out of the country and we'll be doing that in the foreseeable future, yeah. we have a lot of um, of of backup. But mm -hmm. all right, so very fortunate to have this many to even. We talked about uh, Istanbul. We talked about Rune Age. Is that the game I like? <laughs> this happens. Every time you see it. No, it's not. Oh, is it the same world? Room Bound, yeah. Oh. It is the same world, uh, and it, it makes sense that you confuse them. Rune Age is a deck building game. That is okay. It's an old Fantasy Flight deck building game, both cooperative and competitive, which is usually kind of a turnoff for me. I'd rather they just focus on one, but sometimes it works. Um, and uh, that one. I think there's just better deck building games that we have. Um, like Aeon's End? Yeah, and that one actually, the box is damaged, so it's hard to sell. I mean, I'm, I'm selling that one if anyone wants it uh, for like... Pennies. Basically, gonna for a it, high five. I can give it to someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, one of your favorite, when, during the early pandemic, we were trying to clear out some area in our apartment for when our baby was coming and we needed more space, and you sold your games for a really good deal to a mom who was like... Oh, that one felt good, yeah. Yeah, it was like very, like definitely a very good deal for her, and Andrew was like, she has multiple kids. These games are gonna be played. There's, yeah, they have, was, they um, have players in their house. Griff Dog, welcome, long time no see. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Griff Dog. Um, so that one was, uh... Hi, so Birdo! I posted... That food looks good. Birdo, are you gonna go to the trade in Pial this weekend? Anyways. We'll probably see you. Um, so anyways, what I was saying was, uh... Oh, I can't remember. Um, deck builders, you rather, or... No. Co-op versus competitive, you want them to just pick one or the other? No. It's about the trade. Oh, uh, I posted them up with a uh, deal that was like buy one, and then the next one is fifty percent off, and then the next one is, you know, it was kind of an exponential thing. Um, was because I was just trying to clear space, and uh, the person like took full advantage of it. They bought like twenty <laughs> games, <laughs> uh, and the last like five were all like a dollar, five dollars or something like that, but. Um, it was great. I mean, they like definitely. I think they couldn't believe that they were getting that deal, and then um, where you were like, you guys have more they, yeah, than two players in and, your home. Yeah, during and, COVID too, it was like, yeah, you guys can play these. We can't play a lot of these. What raid incoming? Oh, yes, we are. Make me pick games to get rid of. It's really hard, Birdo. This is exactly what we're talking about. This, this, this pile. Yeah. Of if you see anything in this, Birdo, let, let us know. Um, Andrew will give you a good I'll deal. I'll set him off aside. Wait, Birdo is trying to get rid of games. <laughs> or trade. Hi, Tail Wagon Games. This looks so yummy. Yes, it's very yummy. Mm -hmm. And um, we have been working very hard um, decluttering, and then so today we were like. Maybe we'll just eat and talk about games instead of playing some games. How are you doing, um, Tail Wagon Games? And it's too hot for hot pots, as Amanda. Amanda, you are right. I actually thought about this the other day. I made like some Cajun fries and they were spicy. And I was like, I don't know if I should be making 
Cajun, homemade Cajun fries right now, but it's tasty. But we followed what you suggested last time, which is cook all the meat first before the starches. Mm. And the broth is very tasty. So we thank you. Yeah, great we thank idea. you for your um, your guidance and your um, our hot pot is our hot pot now and our forevermore hot, will be hot, tastier. Our hot pot guru. <laughs> Teach us your ways. Um, but yes. Yeah, so. we'll sweat and then cool down in front of a fan. Perfect plan. It's also, cool the tofu here. is perfect. Oh, the tofu is yeah, perfect. It's, well, it's let me grab it now. Almost a little bit overdone. Oh shoot. Oh, let's it is overdone. Let's see if you can get it. Let's see if... And the raid's coming in. No pressure. Oh my gosh. He is getting this. The, oh, the raid is going to see this. Is it going to break? Andrew! Is it? Stop. The tofu's... Ah! <laughs> Andrew, stop it! Do you want me to get it for you? <gasps> no, you just need to not be... Yeah, no pressure. There's just like 50 people that raided us. <laughs> it broke! <laughs> just kidding. There's no raid! <laughs> No, there's a raid. There's a raid. Board oh. Game, board game Blitz. Oh, Board Game Blitz. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, see, now I'm seeing all the <laughs> the icons. Board Game Blitz, thank you for raiding. I know I was stressing out with hearing <laughs> you, you were here. Um, I'm excited you're here. I just was not happy that Andrew was stressing me out. Where's our raid As I was trying to get... All right, so we got a new thing to show you. So everyone who's new... Uh, I'm Andrew. I'm Pia. We're Board Game Spam, and we stream Mondays and Thursday nights. Typically play board games, um, but tonight we're preparing for a big uh, swap meet this weekend, trying to get rid of games, so I'm going to be talking about these uh, and kind of my thought process, and you're going to probably convince me to keep them all. And then, um, yeah, anyways, we do analog alerts. So this is, uh, what's his name? Funko Pop Spam. Um, we haven't done this a, a TBD, um, to be determined name We're, for the spam can. Spam can. <laughs> so spam can is going to be um, part of our analog alerts uh, sometime in the future. They all left after seeing the tofu split. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 yeah, thank you for... Thank you for dropping in. Um, yeah. What were you guys playing? Yeah, and also, um, what are your thoughts in of trimming board, down yeah. um, board games? I, I love that Benita has a never call, um, <laughs> <laughs> never call, don't do it um, perspective. Stance, perspective. I can't, I can't live that life, but I do like it. And, Andrew can't live that life, but I feel like he wants to live it in his heart and soul. Um, but let's see. Oh, Amby had to refresh because there's a bunch of lag. Oh no! Oh no! Oh Total yeah! Split is bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Pia. For sure, it's the tofu split is the equivalent of like the raid idol like breaking in half. Oh as no! Well. It's a curse. <laughs> um. Uh, Omg, Funk spam, Funko spam. Yeah, I was like thinking. I I think it was after a stream. Someone had some Funko Pops in the in the back of in the background of their stream, and I was like, I "Wonder if there's a spam can? There's spam plushies." Legends has reported back that they have seen one in a game store. Um, I've seen a spam pl plushie too. Tail wagon games. If you were closer, Andrew would give you such a good deal. He just wants the games to go to people who will love them and play them. Mm -hmm. um, and. It's good. Games. I'm it's gonna have good. to call with the big box uh, nemesis that just arrived. I know, and I, that's another thing that I'm thinking. I'm like, I'm we're clearing space. We're trying to move games that I that have slowly creeped their way out of our board game closet into the living room. We're trying to move them back in. <laughs> uh, the living. We're room. trying to corral them like <laughs> like uh, shepherds, um, trying to get them into the closet and close the door because our baby is moving and grooving and so we need to be able to we're... close doors in our home which we, we cannot can right close now the door. Yeah, we can close the door fine it's but the problem is that there's the big heavy board games up on shelves that could fall and that's bad um but all our doors are closable currently which is is a feat that we've accomplished it this. wasn't close they weren't this closable week. yesterday <laughs> andrew worked really hard 
to be able to close the, to move out all the board games. Also, are we the only ones that have board games in like every room? The only room I was thinking of that we don't have board games is it's our kitchen, kitchen, but then I or have the a little bowl. Oh, I guess the bathroom. I have a bowl of dice in the kitchen, which I don't know why. It's like I have a little like yogurt glass container. Mm -hmm. I don't remember why I brought that in there because I do remember putting them in there. I think they were for fidgets. Mm, or I something. Know. I don't know. Anyways. If we ever needed a dice, we're in a the dice kitchen. roll. Yeah. Should, How long should to cook I make? This? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long to cook the noodles? Four minutes. We played walk and roll. Oh, I've seen that recently. Um, um, designer Daryl Chow joined us on the stream to teach it. That's a game that I'm. We're very motivated by on theme alone. Mm -hmm. Um. And I saw a couple people on Instagram play it recently, and I've been very interested in it. I also like how it looks, too, the style of it. Um, and we just have a lot of foodie-type friends, so I feel like they would love it. easy sells. Food yeah. themes. Well, we, we have some friends who really liked um, rival restaurants, specifically because also they like love going out to eat and like cooking and whatnot, too. Mm -hmm. um, Should oh. we do another noodle bundle? Um, I'm, I'm slowing down. Or like... Okay, one last noodle bundle, and I think that's probably gonna be that'll be it. Be, be it, and then we'll just go into. I'm the... going to have to call the big boss now. <laughs> it's arrived. I was in board game rambling Discord earlier, and um, Johannes said that they called 400 games in the last three. 400. Years. Ah, Whoa. that's bigger than our collection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, Beyond Dead says board game Steph is probably with you. Yeah, they probably have a board game in every room. Uh, our place isn't huge, and so we have to be mindful of that. What? I just like how it's like we have to be mindful about it, but we haven't, we haven't moved. We've been in the same place, and we've just like. But we've been. I mean, that's why we do coals every year or so, mm -hmm. and then bring so many to the Philippines. In. Mm -hmm. We have been. We have been. Don't don't pretend no, we, like we, we have. No, we have, we have, but it was just funny how it's like. <laughs> so that's why we kind of do the big coals. Um, otherwise, we would just fill more, and we don't even have a Calax. Is that a board game? We confession? don't. Is does, that a e sin? does everyone use a Calax to um, store their games? We have a different IKEA system. It doesn't work as well, but no. it fits our space. It's like a little wraparound thing. Mm-hmm. Do you best sauce? Yeah. The room smells really good. And actually, that's one of my DJ favorite parts. DJ Lojo. Andrew. That's, I love, like, the shirt that I wore eating Hot Pot the next day. It smells like Hot Pot. It mm. reminds him of his, good, of a, oh his favorite meal. The meal that he had the day before. Everyone so. online talks about Calyxes. Um... And uh, I've seen that there's a few people that don't have calyxes. So oh, I, I always, I always have this like calyx. idea that yes, everyone has Yes, we have the calyx it. and needing to get more. Since we're running out of room, we just have a huge shelf from Costco. No calyx here. It's like a shirt after camping. Yes, DJ yes, Lojo! I was thinking that exact same thing. That bonfire smell. I love it. In that sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. Uh-oh, the tofu was there. Tofu's ready long. again. Um, yeah, I... Andrew loves the, like, when you walk past your hot pot shirt, mm -hmm. like, and then you're like, oh, I'm... Or you pick it up to put it in the laundry, you're like, oh, oh, dinner, so good. I also like... Also, what are people's favorite dinners? Like, favorite meal of all time? Because this is yours, hot pot is yours. I don't know what mine is. Um... I like how, well, you said this, this is a good dinner, but it's also a good experience. It's a, it's the meal we take people it's the when most... we have, we haven't seen them in a while and we want to have Spend a long a meal time. with yeah. them. And it's the most bored game of all the meals. Yeah, because. It's a cooperative game. We've, well, the last <laughs> time we streamed um, Hot Pot, the, the chat was very clever and figured out how the game is cooperative, but also a little competitive because you might want some. Yeah, you, you know. might want more of the mushrooms and, so, and someone else might also want that. Mm, everyone's buying aligned. for the tofu. Um, 
it's also nerve-wracking because you could be trying to grab the tofu and you're trying to avoid the the horrible the horrible tofu split Mm -hmm. um that's a sign for a you know a sign that i don't know your hot pot is going to be cursed dj loju says the first thing that comes to mind is authentic Masaman curry. Oh, with big potato chunks. Mm. I like Masaman curry. Yeah. That's for sure. Hi, Eclectic Camel! Oh! It gets a, a blessing! Uh-oh. It's straight we're, ahead. We're right, not right ready. Right, right there. Oh. Might have to stand up. Tailwag Games Pad Thai is probably your favorite. Oh, Ooh, yes. okay. That might be... That might... I might have to jump in on that. Because I... You're very particular about your pad thai. Yeah, but when it's good, ooh, I love it. And most of the time I do like it, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, I clicked a camel. Thank you for the bits. The next time you make tofu for Hot Pot, may it not split when everyone's mm-hmm. watching you and you're trying to retrieve <laughs> it. it. Also, tofu is the one with the biggest splash. So it's like a da- dangerous, it's a danger zone. So. Legitimately dangerous. Um, so thank you so much for the bits. Um, may you be able to handle the tofu. LLMK, well. thank you for the mm. LLMKs. Um, also, as we start to wind Pad down thai. the meal, mm-hmm. yeah. um, what, uh, I know everyone kind of, um, uh has a different opinion about um the purpose of their board game collection oh. and i think it it what's your okay sorry go ahead sorry i just don't know this question so i'm curious i feel like it's talked about it anyways um yeah everyone has a different theory behind their behind their the reason they own games uh for us it's a lot about because we tend to be the person with the games it's all about matching and, and we like curating selections for other people and so every game in our collection isn't necessarily our favorites but we have people that we want to play it with or we think it will they would really enjoy so a lot of our collection um i mean at least half is as much about the people and our friends um as it is about specifically our interests yeah, because if um, our friends like it, mm-hmm. or they like the theme, or they, they're interested in, like, they're willing to play that weight of game, it's just so fun. It's another way, like, a fun interaction with our friends. Mm-hmm. Um, but not everyone thinks of it. Or not everyone What? <laughs> oh, DJ okay. says, I'm also the guy that mixes it together. <laughs> Some people just have their favorite games. Mm-hmm. Or if you're within a friend group that everyone's buying games, you're trying not to repeat. Oh, you know, like, yeah, we don't have friends that... That may, like our friends aren't buying at the rate that we are. Oh, I see. My favorite dinner is turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, and gravy. Ooh. Don't forget the cranberries. Mm-hmm. I'm the same. I bring games and intro people into the hobby, so I have games that I'm only okay that I'm only okay with, but they might like. Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. like that's, that's that's how a collection really balloons. <laughs> a balloons. Oh yeah. yeah. It gets really big. You're like, oh my god. And then you like have five repeat games. You're like, oh, I've got ten games. I want to play with this one person, and I see them every other month. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> like... <laughs> but um, Amanda, I feel like I was in your chat one time, and you were talking about how like, um, if it's a style of game you like, mm-hmm. then it's easier to like want a couple of games that maybe someone else, if they don't like that style, they might say, oh, that's kind of a repeat that kind of like overlaps in some ways. But it's like, no, I I really like that mechanism or whatnot, so I'm willing to do more of the like i'm okay like i'm interested in the nuance of like the different games yes but. yeah um sometimes like yeah with worker placements i was in this last call i was kind of like oh man i've got a lot of euros that kind of are overlaps you know so i was like that's one that one type of game that doesn't get played as much for us um except for i guess on the stream but um <laughs> you should allow that <laughs> oh the auto mod did not like DJ Lojo's statement, but it's holy cow, that's a big piece of tofu. It was a big piece and it didn't, <laughs> and it didn't split. Break. Successful. <laughs> oh no, thanks. 
Thanks, Amanda. No, no, no. Do, never say sorry about that. <laughs> um, it looks like... I think most folks who call it a collection as if they're creating a, uh, curating a museum, I think they're just trying to justify overspending. Hot take! Oh! <laughs> you know, there's uh, there's an element to that, I feel like. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's 100% any of those things, but definitely... Um, yeah, because some people collect to own... Uh, they like... Yeah, like you said, like a museum. Like, oh, I want to have this game because it's out of print and it's hard to find. You know, some people collect because of rarity. Some people collect because... Um, uh, oh, yeah, I saw like, someone, they were talking about how they're like, this. I bought this game not because I'm going to play it, but because it was a game that... Um, like to not, find a moment or no, whatever. No, like it, it is like a game that that led to all these other games. Like it was mm. one of the early games or whatever. And I was like, oh, I've never really thought about owning something like that mm -hmm. but i mean like we own Balsar galactica because i mean we've wanted it back or whatever because it's been though. we do play yeah. it but i feel like we like it so much more because it was one of the first shows we watched so mm -hmm. and that's a hard for sure yeah yeah andrew it's what is the thing that you what is like it's not a personality test but there's something about like like collecting was one of the options. Oh, there's your gamer profile. Yeah, a gamer profile or something. I can't no. remember the website, but you get to see. Oh I'm yes. Sure. Mm -hmm, yeah, you get to see kind of what drives you as a board mm -hmm. gamer. Okay. Yeah, and Andrew. Oh yeah, he board game is... motivation. I was it... like fully in every category. <laughs> Omni gamer to yeah. the fullest. No, I remember you y'all like took the that um, gamer profile thing, and it was interesting because Andrew's dad is a big book collector, and prior to that, Andrew's grandpa collected toy cars, like old. I don't know how. When I say toy cars, when, before I saw them, like those antique type toy cars. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, I've yeah. never heard of them or saw them before until I met your grandpa. But oh. there's, yeah, I didn't know that people like collected old toys, old toys. But um, then I watched a Netflix documentary about people collecting Power Ranger toys, and I was like, oh, okay, anyone can let can collect anything. <laughs> but yeah, because um, they were toys from his generation. So, yes, yeah. yeah. So there's a nostalgia piece of like, mm -hmm. I remember he said like he really wanted this toy, and then now he like had it as an adult. <laughs> DJ Ojo, Automod is after me. Uh, <laughs> some people collect rare games only to sell them for fifty dollars. Um, that's true. Um, and then uh, tail wagons. We get games specifically for our game night group we host. We also get ones that play well with two players. Uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, that, yeah, those are the kind of the two, the two categories. Um, and then, I guess before we had the baby, we were. Do you mind scooting? I'm oh, sorry. Your like face oh, is sorry. in the middle of. Um, um, before yeah, before the pandemic, before we had a baby, we would, we would be going over to other people's house and playing a game at probably once a week. About once a week. So there was a lot of different couples, and any one of those couples we may play a game with once a month, but we would rotate around them. Um, so we were playing once a week during that time. And they all had average. different fa like different and they all favorites. Different, yeah. Different yeah. Favorites and whatnot. And then um, Eclectic Camel says, to clarify, I mean folks who buy games not to buy. Um, I mean, I mean people who actively play their games. Oh, folks who buy games not, not to, to play. play. Oh, yeah. Like, um, that's, yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes Legends sense. What Eclectic Game was Camel. offered, I think you told us before. But uh, what game did they offer four hundred dollars for you? To you? I can. Re I recognize that can. Rogue Colossal Claw. Don't judge me. What game? Oh, this can. <laughs> oh. Yes, Bat Squatch. Easy. Bat. Drink responsible. Squatch. <laughs> I picked it specifically. Well, because it was Rogue, and because. I hadn't seen it before. I love a good hazy IPA. Mm -hmm. um, 
I thought you were talking about the can, the little spam can. <laughs> Hi, LTR, what game? Yeah, Legends, let us know. Oh, Star Wars Queen's Gambit. Is that mm -hmm. the game? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. There are Which two I'm not super, I'm not super familiar fun. with that, but it must have been an old... That's the thing with licensed products is they'll get sold and just like Battlestar Galactica, they'll just kind of live in, in the void for years and years and years. Maybe they'll get picked up again. Um, Clancy Campbell says, yeah, I have some first editions of games I'll never part with, but I'll totally play them too. Yeah, we're, I think, um, I think I, oh, sh did you turn this off? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I, I, I haven't met anyone who won't play a game because of rarity or price but i think we're just our circles are just not people who who would do that are you done sorry i started big assumption from andrew <laughs> that i was done started cleaning no it's good okay. <laughs> it's fine because we're gonna we're gonna talk about the games oh gosh i think you have to twist it yeah there's a locking mechanism Oh, it does have to be fully off. I'm nervous about this. Alright, I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm gonna just move the whole thing. Oh my gosh, hold on. We're resituating, apparently. Oh, you're good, you're good. Oh, no, well, maybe. No, because if you're gonna cross this way. Alright, so hold, hang on. We're gonna talk about board games here in a second. As long as I don't spill oh this gosh. all over everything. This makes me so nervous. I could totally see that happening. But I always play my games. Yeah, the, um, ooh. He's cleaning, he's on the move. Yeah, I feel like, do people um, keep their games in shrink until they play it? I, I realize, um, the more we've met more board game people, they've said like, oh, I'll keep it in shrink and then when I have a chance, then I'll like, if, if it's finally going to be um, a game we're playing this weekend, like I'll open it or whatever. But Andrew loves opening the games. <laughs> I'm not patient enough for that. I wish I was. Andrew loves opening his games, reading the rules, like part of his fun and enjoyment. Organizing them. Um, is organizing and looking at the games and imagining... Um, the game's being played, and part of it for me, if I'm going to be interested in the game, is like looking at all the pieces and seeing it, which is why Twitch has been so great, because I can like see the pieces and how the game moves um, when people are playing on stream. Um, and I think that's the reason why I've liked playing more games, and... Um, or and, and like played the games that we haven't gotten to the table because of since starting streaming because I've seen like oh so and so like Amanda's playing this game and Andrew's like we own that game like, oh okay let's play it and Andrew's like I've been telling you that this game would be fun and you haven't <laughs> or my least favorite thing to say we owned that game <laughs> in the past and it's gone now um, <laughs> but now you're interested because yeah. Amanda was playing it and it's like yep that's how it goes all right so we already talked about antiquity a bit um I have too many splatter games and I haven't played any of them so uh that's that's a problem I should not have as many um and you're just gonna go through these, all of them? Yeah, that's oh, what we talked about, right? I didn't realize. Oh. I thought we were just gonna chat a little bit about it. Oh, I'll stop if people want. Oh wait, oh, I do want to see this. I, the new game smell. Um. Oh wait, mm -hmm. let's see. Oh, I didn't realize. Andy, antiquity is fun. I know. I that's antiquity is one that if it doesn't sell, I'm fine with it because it's probably. <laughs> I'm coming back because I've heard it so good. DJ Lo just says on the bright side, if he spills it everywhere, it will. It will really smell good <laughs> in our party. For 24 hours. I always unbox mine immediately. Board Game Feast, Andrew's there, right there with you. Um, Tailwalking Games, I typically keep my, mine in shrink until I'm ready to learn it. Tailwalking Games, I feel like if I were doing more of the purchasing of the games, I feel like that's how I would probably do it. Mm -hmm. um, Oftentimes. Because then I get to be excited about a new game like when it's happening. Mm. 
<laughs> and I'm opening it. One um, thing that Pia does that it drives just, you nuts. Not drives me nuts, but I just like can't imagine doing this. Is she'll get an Amazon package or something and delivered delivered she'll bring it inside and not immediately open it she'll be like oh i know i'm a psycho i know that's like (laughs) that necklace i bought or that like shirt i bought or whatever i'm just gonna let it sit there for like two three days and i'm not ready to like store it or use it gosh i i it's like if it's five minutes pat i'm like i gotta open it i gotta open it what if it's not the right yeah, thing? Yeah, like the what little if, like... spam the little spam can was in a box in um that the the box that was delivered in for like two days, a day and a half. Um but I just wanna delay delay the excitement of opening it when I'm like mm-hmm. ready to have my full attention. Um anyways. Oh, we're getting raided! Oh, hello! Whoa, so many emotes! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi everyone Welcome, from Raiders. Fontanator stream. What Bonds, what were you playing? And also, here's a question. When you get a new game, do you open it right away? Or, or do, you, do wait you wait? Like a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> I I would wait. Um, or do you open it like a psycho. Oh. Just, Everybody's crazy. <laughs> Everyone's crazy. Um, Great Western Trail. Oh, yes. Oh, Training great. for yes. SaltCon, right? Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, that was an intense raid. I agree. That was, game piece. that was awesome. Um, that was I probably opened one of the best Happy raids City either. right away. Oh, yeah. I guess maybe, I wonder if some people open certain things right away and some don't. I can't control this anymore. Oh, yeah. So we might have to go back up because other people had some responses some to, um, um, immediately open inventory, bag up individual. Oh. Oh, sorry. This is what I don't like about the setup is that I can't read. Andrew, okay, oh, yeah, there. Control. Okay, we're good. So, also, I'm Andrew. Oh, I'm Pia. <laughs> and we're board game spam. Welcome Raiders. Uh, we stream Mondays and Thursday nights. And uh, oh, and Gavin's fingers, we missed you, but thank you for the follow. Oh no, we're we're so all over the place because we ate. We, oh, we were just doing ate a, hot yeah, pot. we were just doing hot pot mukbang, and now we're talking about all the games I'm gonna call. Uh, but so for we do analog alerts and uh, Gavin fingers. This is Dr. Alan Grant. He comes out and says, "Thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it." I was just trying to figure out which bones I'm gonna sell. So uh, gonna figure that out. Took a break. Said hi. Thanks. But thanks everybody. Thanks for rating. <laughs> just a little spam can. Yeah, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with our spam can. So this is new. And the spam uh, can says hello and says thank you. He's gotta have a voice. Hello. Thank you. It's like really quiet. Hello. Thank you for the follow. No, it's the rate. It's supposed to help the raid idol that's broken. Raid idol, put yourself back together. Pull yourself back together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyways. Uh, anyways, analog alerts. Where are you going? Where are you going? I, I want to see people's answers. So let, um, Eclectic Camel says, let Andrew follow his heart and Eclectic Camel that I think I need to like say that to myself whenever I see Andrew trying to do something that I don't be- I don't believe in I don't trust like moving the huge hot pot container across the table I was Work like this great. is a bad Work idea great. um I made okay hold on uh, I need a list I need a list of the games you want Pete to play and I will rave about them about my favorite yes. one, so she'll play it. Yes, um, uh, a mind assault, as we would say. And then Amanda, Amanda yeah, You're going said, so far back. No, hold on. <laughs> okay, okay. Andrew does it, I have better scanning. I sometimes um, don't open a package to savor the opening of the package. That's exactly, uh, I saw that, Ama- I, ba- I like saw it really quickly, and I'm like, Amanda is agreeing, agreeing with me. I need to read it out loud. <laughs> I also have lots of games in Shrink. I'll open up uh, pictures to play um, with Bonds and friends too. Telling us that game says there's 15 games still in the Shrink on there. 15! I guess it helps you. What are you most excited? Which one are you most excited for? It probably helps you keep organized which ones need to oh, be Oh, you need to play, yeah. <laughs> Stacy says, I wait to open it until I know I can play it or at least table it. Mm. 
Just our... see, I feel like I, I feel like I'm finding my um, my compatriots in mm -hmm. terms of keep it in the shrink. You know, it's okay. It's okay. I just don't understand all of you people. <laughs> <laughs> what we do is okay. I'm too he doesn't impulsive. understand. Yeah, it's okay. There's nothing ethically wrong with it. There's nothing no morality, morality to here. it. It's just what Andrew it is. Andrew just can't understand it. I no, just... you're just too excited, and you. Yeah, I'm too hyped. Andrew... If I bought the game, I'm like excited. For also, it. Andrew loves reading rule books. There is always a stack of rule books wherever he sits or next to his, onto his side of the bed because he just likes to <laughs> to read those rule books. DJR twenty four says I open and punch games pretty quickly after getting them. Mm. Uh, setting setting out, out the rules to review. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's that's my approach. Meeple um, says, I think it depends if I get a huge order released, might not unbox right away. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> just sorry, I'm jealous of your ramen shirt, Andrew. Thank you. It's from Destiny 2, if anyone knows the reference. Uh, played or that a just, lot. Or from ramen in general, because it's Andrew is pro-ramen and pro-Destiny. Yeah, although I haven't played Destiny in a long time. Um... <laughs> or can Rain Idol sit on top of the spam can? Oh my gosh, it's like a Megazord. <laughs> it's our powers to buy, let's find out. Oh, no, it, roll yeah. <laughs> it rolls forward. It's, it's broken, so we need to fix it. Maybe then it can. Uh, but the legs are so small. <laughs> Maybe it could go the other way? We just no, bought it doesn't even. a lot that were on sale and haven't played them yet. What? How? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The sale. Uh, Just our friend says one of my friends loves punching uh, games, so I leave them unpunched so they can enjoy. <laughs> I like punching games as well. Um, that's another reason I opened them right away. Because <laughs> that's the fun. Yeah, it's you. part of the fun. And then tail wagging is I'm really excited to open up Graftosaurus this week. Uh, we're gonna play it next week, but I can't wait to see the dinosaur models. Also, I guess we don't really know what games we're gonna be playing very in advance very much. Um, yeah. Stacy Everdell says, uh, so Andrew, when you get back from the grocery store, do you open food and go through? <laughs> you don't plan on eating right away? Like, no, you know, that analogy. Yeah, Stacy. May work. <laughs> Porgies don't have expiration dates, so that's maybe the only, the only main difference. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, also, most food doesn't come with rule books. Mm. Unless it's they're usually printed on the outside. Yeah. But I don't read them until I'm eating them. So. <laughs> okay, so you brought out Paris New Eden. Paris New Eden. Um, this both... one makes me sad because I like this game. Me too. I enjoyed it as well. Um, and uh, it just I don't. Overlaps. I'm not really sad. It overlaps a lot with a lot of kind of those lighter to medium weight euros that we have. Um, I don't remember it doing anything super exciting the art is super cool which is the the sad part but there's so many games in that space that have good art as well no which we're lucky to be here because you know five years ago that that like medium weight euro was like viticulture was the only one that had like a good theme if i remember yeah. correctly or if you're eclectic camel i i always love the eclectic camel stance is just like give me a dry euro game <laughs> a dry ugly euro game oh. i love that i respect that all right, so this You're one... You're getting rid of this? We've talked about this. This is the one... This, <laughs> this is the tug of war. This is... This is the tug of war one. It's so big. It's this giant box. We played a bunch of scenarios in it. We had this is fun. one of the first games that I played a lot of. I think mm -hmm. that's why... I, or that in Clash of Cultures. Yeah. We have better games. Do we? Yeah. What do you think is better than this? Specifically? Sleeping Gods. Oh, okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I do really like it, though. I think this is... I d did not grow up with a lot of high fantasy. Would you say this is high fantasy? So, it was like a game that I think tested my, like... I don't know. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm not immediately interested in this, but Andrew wants to play it. And it's one of... You know what? It's one of our games that we played two-player a lot. Mm -hmm. This was like one of our first two player games we played a lot. Yeah. That's why I think I just want to keep it for memories. For hashtag memories, but mm. also we have too many memories. I feel like I would be down with that, but this box, I don't know, it's not standard size. It's like 
it doesn't fit anywhere. It just like it doesn't fit a couch. It doesn't around. fit a yeah. Costco shelf. It doesn't fit. Yeah, does it spark joy? Um, and then I think Panda asked uh, the Paris, what was an equivalent? Okay. Oh. When yeah. I when I grabbed it, there was like three games that I thought of that was all similar. Viticulture, which I mentioned. Um, oh my gosh. Worker um, placement. Yeah, just worker. Oh. Uh, Viscount of West Kingdom and, or not Viscount, but, um, the first one, the, the Merchants of the West Kingdom, um, Architects? Architects, there we go, uh, sorry, uh, and then, um, the other Who's one. Who's the board game collector now? The other Shem Phillips game, um, Raiders of Scythia, I feel like those all kind of fit in that, that area, and we really like those other ones, and, um, we liked this one, but I think there's just less excitement around it. That's true. Yeah. Alright, this one's a little painful. I don't know if I'm going to do it yet. That Magnificent. We haven't played it yet. Um, love the artwork. Uh, want to play it. It's, it also... <laughs> you can start any of your games with want to play it, have it played. As far it. as I know, it, it fits in a similar space as Paris, New Eden. Um, but... I got it really excited about it, and then I heard a few reviews that were pretty negative on it. Oh no! Um, you gotta play it for yourself so you know. I know because if I had done that, we would have gotten rid of Sanctum, and we both liked Sanctum a lot. So um, yeah, people didn't like Sanctum, but we we don't we we don't mind it. We liked it. This was a tough decision, but maybe we need the space. You know what? How about this? What if we put it aside and then we try to play it before the trade? Okay, we're so, gonna let's have. We're this. making a stack over here of games we're gonna try to play before Sunday. <laughs> Give it here, I'll play it, says Stacy. <laughs> also, no, before Sunday, so we're gonna put the stack here. Andrew, uh, Andrew, whoa, 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 watch out! Whoa, it's you, messy over here. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna put it here then. This guy needs to back up. There's um, an eating zone over here. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, a you're still eating. I'm a slow eater, so. Uh, so this one, still wanna. Still want to make a decision about it. We haven't played it. <gasps> DJ Low just says, are, um, what are the chances you watch this video in a year? I was sad about your long lost game collection. <laughs> I love it. Actually, I, I probably love, will. I love a good tragedy. Yeah. Uh, Heaven and Nail. Is uh, that? Wait a second. Is that the game we played with Josiah? Mm -mm. Okay. What's that one? Is that? I don't know. Is that Taverns of Teeth? Quack, quacks fin, of Fin Lumber? No. Taverns of Teeth and Fall. Yes, he has that. Josiah has that. We gave that to him. Yeah. The one where you have like the little slotted pieces that go mm -hmm. in. This is different. Okay. This one's fun. I like, because I like the uh, I actually really enjoyed my first play of it. Uh, I played with the Moy in chat, two player. Um, it's a really tight game. Um, the economy is super tight and it's hard to stay above the water. Um, but the theme is not attractive to most people, and I, Derek, who I, I really enjoyed playing it with, has forgotten the game. Because I've, <laughs> I've mentioned it a few times to him, and he was, if he's here, he's like, what was that game? And he didn't remember it as fondly as I did, and it was hard enough to get it played once. And so, uh... So there it goes. There it goes. Um, Antiquity Under Paris... Is under Paris. Oh yeah, antiquity. Yeah. Um, just our Andrew was just talking about how he likes the idea of splatter games. He has three splatter. I games. fell in love with the idea of splatter games. I have four, including four. antiquity, and I haven't played any of them. And they've had them for a year and a half. So and Andrew so was trying to get rid of one. I was challenged myself to get rid of one, and antiquity seemed like the least likely to get played of the ones I have. Andrew is really torn up about it. He, uh, so we have we have uh, food chain magnate, which is we really want to play. We really want to, I, people, I really want to play all of these, and I you, have people to play. You have it, people yeah. who are who ready are to play it. that. Um, we have bus, the twentieth anniversary edition, and um, uh, roads and boats. And Pia is interested in roads and boats. Pia was not interested in antiquity, although you guys might be able to convince her. Yeah, so. lay, lay it on me. <laughs> Gigi Lo, did you ever play the new Dune game? Thoughts? Uh, we haven't. And that one was really hard not to buy. I have two friends who bought it because they love the IP of Dune. Um, 
and so I have held off. I haven't bought it, but I haven't played it either yet. So I need to. I just need to ask him to play it. That's what I need to do. Um, <laughs> Andy says I haven't played Bus Roads and Boats is a lot. <laughs> is a lot of chits. <laughs> yes. Um, just R says that that he could teach us most of them, which we're gonna need. And Stacy Everdell, it's funny because I feel like. It, do you feel like I want to keep more games than you? When I'm going through these, oftentimes you veto a lot of them. The good old fashioned. <laughs> but she's Kia not. She's not veto. paying attention to the space, so I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> the, right now, there's. I. I don't think there's space even for one more game. But um, unless we start putting them in other rooms, which you also complain about. <laughs> Yuka so. Frank says, "Okay." <laughs> yes, let's play it. Uh, Fog of Love. Uh, we I can played... take a field trip. So so is it. So is Antiquity. So is oh, so Antiquity has a lot of chits. Yeah, I'm guessing both Rose and Boats and Antiquity have tons and tons of chits, uh, and they're well organized in here. I spent time organizing those. Um, um, Andrew, Andrew has them in little containers. Yeah, little containers. Anyways. Um. Respect for how protective Pia is of games. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't see this one where she just held ice cream, melting ice cream over the game we were playing. Uh, Sometimes I have moments of... Um... Of uh, clarity. <laughs> and, uh, and otherwise. Uh, I only played partially, partial play of Roads and Boats and liked it, but didn't want to play it again because it is so much upkeep that made me want to play SimCity. <laughs> you I love SimCity. I love SimCity. Um, Fog of Love... Man, wait, and then Ambie, you have you played Antiquity then? Well, maybe we should keep Antiquity and get rid of Roads and Boats. These aren't questions. The thing is, <laughs> Roads and Boats fits really well on our shelf right now because I'm using it as a shelf between vertical games. <laughs> Andrew is, is he's got he's got um, I got a weird system that I'm using right mad now. Madman vibes recently. Trying to make his games like it's Fit. like kind of like you know that meme of that guy from um is it from uh, uh what um sunny sunny always sunny always sunny where he's like <laughs> he's like in front of a uh, like a whiteboard and he's like thinking it feels like you trying to get all your games into the closet which is his goal at the moment. Amy says they uh, she's played into pretty twice. Uh, they're very different games. Oh shoot! Well, yeah. we'll see if Antiquity makes it. The thing out is, I'm of kind it. of pricing Antiquity for what I would really want for it. Because um, most of them, he's pricing to sell. Uh, yeah, and so we'll see if it even sells. Um, best world is if I traded it with someone I know vaguely uh, for something I want as much, and then I can get. So and you can yeah, play it. Yeah, and I can play the game that I want and uh, still eventually play Antiquity. Doesn't mean I don't want to play any of these games. Fog Love was fun. We played it a few times. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's ran its course. Mm -hmm. It was very fun to watch you and Uncle Jojo play that game together. It would be a fun stream for us to do, but... Um, but alas, there's no room. Uh, Magna Storm. This one's always... Just Sar says, for... if you end... It if you if you end up with a coal pile, let me know. Lola, let me know. <laughs> we will, Jessar. This is the coal pile. I don't know if you saw the setup. This is the coal pile. Yeah. Well, this is the this is the to sell pile for a. Oh. Um, yeah, there's a board game swap meet this Sunday, so that's just for everyone's context, I guess. There's a bunch of people who joined us, <laughs> uh, and we didn't explain. Yeah, we're going through the games that we're getting rid of. We're trying to sell at uh, the swap meet here in... I've never seen this game. In the Pacific Sorry. Northwest, Puyallup. It's on Sunday. Come say hi if you... Come say hi. Andrew will give you a deal. Yeah. Uh, you've never seen... This one's really cool looking. Uh, the production's super cool. It's like there's a storm that's going around and you're trying to put in these uh, research stations out in the storm. But... Why um... haven't we played this? This looks cool! Show them, show them the... Oh, just sorry. I played this and enjoyed it a lot. Wait, space lost? turtles? Yeah, there's space turtles. There's in space turtles? Yeah. 
This one was a tough decision. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I won't sell this one. This, uh, this is thing, exactly what we thought would happen. People would be like, that's I think they overproduced it, and it's super cheap. Uh, and I don't ever hear anyone talk about it. And so I was now questioning you do. Just saw whether or not it's any good. Space Turtles. Stacy Overdale. Did you open it and never play it, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. There are many, there are many, ga- of many of these games. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. It had bad PR. Only di- oh. It bad. <gasps> mm, oh, that's okay. why. Yeah, I was, I was wondering. Do, do games like if they have bad PR, then and they're like, is it very easy for them to tank? Yeah, I mean, I feel like Dice Tower. If they give it a really bad review, no one else is gonna try to review uh, it. Oh, well. but that like, could be just my impression. It's know. like a little um, what is it? Amy says swap meets sound cool. We just have to giving our games away. Yeah, so <laughs> we we, we have do to that every Andy. other year. We bring a bunch to the Philippines to be his family. And then, and then this year at the start of the pandemic, Andrew did this too with our friends because he was hoping, since we weren't seeing them, maybe they would like to play the games that he bought that he was planning on playing with them. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's let's keep this on the, we gotta try it yeah, this before. Is, this is the, uh, we're considering. That. How long are the, I'm realizing this is gonna be a big, this is gonna yeah, be busy for us. Yeah, that's what I'm saying here. So 60 minutes for this one, for the Magnificent, this one. Oh is uh 70 to 100 so they're both pretty long all right oh, this one just Sarah says dice tower actually spoke well of it it's just no one else talked about it got it got it got it yeah i wonder why because it's um it's from uh capstone games so. <laughs> tail and geese says and this is why you shouldn't open games right away you could sell it for more <laughs> if it was still a shrink that's true yeah that's uh true. but i don't really care too much about this the value. This is this is this is like uh, this is why Andrew his brain doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. No, no, no. Yeah. I um I feel the same way, and I I have ta- told Andrew this, or like I when I heard about that tail wagon games, I'm like Andrew, you should wait. But he has so much fun opening and punching out the the things and reading the rules that even if he doesn't play it, you get how much percent of the game out of it? Twenty five percent of the fun. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe not 25%, but enough 15? Yeah, 15. 15. You heard it here. You heard it here, <laughs> folks. <laughs> Just as I could probably teach you live. Oh. <gasps> yeah. Uh, Interesting. That sounds fun. Uh, oh, man. Okay. We have, like, I one need to day remember to remember this. this. We have one day to play all these. So this is Doctor Who <laughs> Dalek Dice. I won this for free. Where? Oh, at that bar? So, honestly, if you want it and just come by, um, I don't remember where I got it, but it just has been shuffled around. This one isn't purchased. This one's not open. You can tell. Uh, I want to watch Doctor Who, and I'm sure I'd like it, but I haven't, and so... Also, what season of Doctor Who should we watch? That's the thing. I always get different answers, and so I never know where to start. Open it to Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> I still think you can build an upper level in the ro- in that room. A good four feet deep and store a lot of games. That's just the room I can see. <laughs> uh, we could store a lot of games in here if we wanted. Um, uh, let's see. I'll come back ten minutes and the stack will be blocking the camera. <laughs> That's true. These are becoming our maybe pile. Yeah, let's see how high... How, how, how high... Um, it will go. Legend says I wanted to try Magna Storm. Uh, Stacy um, says I don't entirely agree with uh, Dice Tower reviews. They can be swingy, in fact. In turn, I've turned to other channels for reviews and feel more in line with my taste. Yeah, I would agree. I don't. I mean, every once in a while, if I really want to buy something, I'll <laughs> I'll find it that they said that it's good, and so I'm like, oh, one person said it's good. Um, but. Uh, or oftentimes on those games, they're the only ones who cover it because they just cover such a broad range of games. Um, and so maybe that was the review I saw for Magnus Storm. Mm. But uh, yeah, I they don't always line up with my taste. And so... Uh, okay. uh, Marco Polo? Oh my gosh. This is going to be a what? really long stream. I'm looking at it. Oh, we can cut it off anytime. It's only 9.30. <laughs> okay. It's only 9.30. Okay. Um, if, we, if we need to... If we need to start playing the games because we're gonna run out of time, then we can do that. Uh, Marco Polo, people love. Uh, 
Board Game Barrage is one of their favorite games. Um, I know that the designer came out and said some pretty terrible things in the last few months, and I was having a hard enough time getting it to the table anyways, and we try not to cover games if it's the designer is a well-known racist problematic. person. Yeah, problematic person. So um, that was part of the reason that I was thinking of getting rid of this one, and uh, even though the game is supposed to be very good, um, also no the dry has... euro theme again just I just can't get when I've got these games that look so much nicer yeah it's just so hard to I don't know what people. type of game this is but if it's next to Nemesis and it's your group of friends it's not gonna get played <laughs> no, no. like to be uh, to be realistic with our group of friends oh my gosh um, um oh that's cool SR yeah, um, Desar had a um, guy from their game group that moved to Florida to work with them. Even, even mentioned my game group. Taught me Hansa to Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Taught him Mombasa and some other games. Oh my gosh, I love Marco Polo on BGA. Oh man, BGA. Also, what are there? Some of these games must be on. Yeah, and then other times like that, I could play Marco Polo on board games. So it's not like. Again, well, you could play it, and you could actually find people to play it with yeah. while our friend group isn't going to play it. I'm probably more likely to play it on Board Game Arena than I am in person. And as we get to know more people that are you know, Twitch streamers or other content creators or just people kind of in this circle, the Twitch circle of board gaming, uh, I feel like a lot of people own this, so uh, I'll, I'll play it with them. If it's if it's a game they love, and I think that's what another thing I'm trying to do is like the games that are beloved within the, the hobby that I can't convince my circle to play with, I'll probably get a chance to play eventually. Um, as we you know get to know more content creators, so Crystal Palace is the next one. We almost played this. I had it fully set up, and then I think Pia just said no. <laughs> what I did? <laughs> yeah. No way. <laughs> Um, it was like, I don't know, February. I'm sorry, December. Crystal Palace. I mean, the art I'm is sorry, a quiet Andrew. taste on that one. Um, I'm sorry that you, you got, you did all the work to play it and get it ready. It's okay. But I don't know if I would play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, that's what happened. Uh, just sorry, we pushed, um, oh wait. He taught me Hansa, Mombasa. We pushed him deeper into heavy games and spot reviewing Lucerta games. Um, yeah, I love Marco Polo, uh, but I don't like the theme. Yeah, the theme I'm just kind of neutral on for Marco Polo. Um, Ambi, oh yeah, there's a site with a bunch of splatter games too, Ambi. You could play those. Ooh, nice. Thanks for letting us know, Ambi. Um, Hannah Angel's asking about that site. And then much easier to get rid of stuff when there's a racist involved. <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's uh, it makes the decision a little easier. At least, like, at least with our, we try not to bring attention to those games officially on the stream by playing them. Like uh, what you did just now. Like no, that's fine. That's letting people know. You don't. You can't know otherwise. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, Ambi says I'm not sure. I just, I just know it exists. Um, just our bus is on Spail Spailyweb. Oh, it's Spillyweb is the website, it seems like. Um, Ambi, maybe board game for Oh, they're just figuring it out. Uh, Panda, I, wonder, I really want to try spotters, but can't find the right group. Yeah, Panda, that's that's kind of where we're at. It's it's It seems like it's you want to learn it with a group that you're going to also continue playing it with, because if you're good at them, I've heard that it can be a pretty miserable experience playing against people who are... Um, good at them because they're just so cutthroat. Um, and then Jassar, pun or punishing, Jassar says Antiquity, uh, TGZ, Indonesia, and uh, Food Chain Magnet are on Board Game Core. So Board Game Core seems to be the one. Uh, oh no, no Indonesia. I think Indonesia is on um, one of the big ones. Um. Tabletop Simulator. I think it might be like a, an official 
like DLC mod. Um, BJR Fuji Magnet is, on board game core is a good implementation. Implementation. Oh, cool. Uh, also, just so I said it's the site that they're gonna teach us food chain magnet. Awesome. Yeah, we gotta figure out a time. Summer is getting full, Jasar, but we we we, we want to play it. Ambi, uh, it has into Kuti as well. So it's fine if we call it. <laughs> as long as if we love it, then you know maybe I can trade to get it back at some point. Um, DJ Lojo, I kind of dislike the term culling for getting rid of games. It feels so brutal. Uh, that's true. I I posted in our Twitter earlier, um, or I think I in the title of this, cull. And then Pio was like, don't use the word cull. Uh, it's too mean, I guess. I don't know. It does feel brutal. Downsizing the collection. Their game. The thing is, I bought all these games. Uh, the ones I haven't played, I still want to play for the most part, and uh, it's just a matter of time and space. Pan Angel, I never buy um, Marco Polo or Marco Polo 2, and I won't stream it because of that. Yeah. Um, that is a good policy. If you want the... Uh, if you want it, though, <laughs> you don't have to buy it. No money will be going towards the... Uh, the Creator, you take it from us. Um, feels so brutal. It's like the slowest bison getting eaten by wolves. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna continue with the games here. I think I'm caught up with chat for the most part. Um. Oh, Panda says, the problem with streaming TTS games is that you have to make sure they're legit and not fan-made. Oh, I didn't realize that that was an issue, but I guess publishers, if they're not cool with it being on there, then they wouldn't be happy. Um, all right, so this is code 777, the um, Dice Tree version, which anyone familiar with Dice Tree? Great. Uh, publisher that does really cool productions of usually pretty simple games um, and they always include metal coins which is if I'm gonna be completely honest with myself why I bought this with metal coins it's like a game with metal coins yes please um, I don't know if it's really our groups type of game it's a deduct like a heavy heavy deduction game um, here's the metal coins uh, it's a heavy heavy deduction not Okay, the game's not heavy, but it's mostly just deduction, um, and you're asking me specific questions. I like the production. We had gotten winner's circle from this pr this publisher, and so that's what kind of turned me on to the publisher, and um, I was like, oh, I love their productions, so let me check out some of their other games, and then, um, I don't know, COVID happened, and we just haven't played it in a long time. Also, Pia Wonder about, I'm not sure... Oh, Pia's gonna be back soon. And he says, I wanna get Winter Circle. Winter Circle's fun. Um I think it's two rounds too long. If it was just one round, it would be the perfect length. But it can go pretty long sometimes. Is this the, the racing one? The racing one, yeah. Yeah. I I really it's I'm, really fun and it's really exciting. But it's hard to maintain that level of excitement for like two hours. Um it feels like it would be perfect at forty five minutes. What were you gonna say, Peter? I really like that game. Um, it makes I I have really enjoyed Good night, Panda. Bye, Panda. Um, and thank you again for teaching us to put the meat in the hot pot first. I've already said it. Thank you, but mm -hmm. it made a big difference. It was very tasty. Anyways, um, I really like that game, and I'm sad that you're getting rid of it. I do Which understand one? the. The racing game. Oh, I gave it to the one. Oh, because the Moy loved it. Um, what are you talking just now about? Code seven seven seven. Oh, okay. Oh, are you talking about the production? It's the same publisher. Oh, got it. Okay, well then, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, the Great Fire of London. It's an early Pandasaurus game. 
The theme is interesting. I got it in a trade. So, um, uh, I, I might not, have, I probably shouldn't have traded for it because I was just like, oh, that seems like a cool theme. Uh, but I think it's really long. Um, the theme does seem pretty interesting and the production seems pretty interesting. Um, here you go, Ambi, but I'm just sorry I had to answer your question. Code 777. Yeah. These are all, I mean, I feel like the caveat in all of these is Andrew wants to play them. They're... Yeah, I still want to play them. And I would. We have a closet full of other games. But we still have so many other games, so it's, it's a little tough. Alright, what else? Meeple War. Anyone play this or heard of it? It's a little Simon game. I think I got it on sale. Some of these are impulse purchases. <laughs> So that is this is where the impulse don't impulse purchase board games, <laughs> board games because they end up in your uh, selling list. Uh, I thought the theme was fun. It's a little area control game. Well, we have a lot of area control. Yeah, and um, we have a lot. Again, of area just control. it's been tough to tough to find players. Um, just Sar says, I found the code. I found the code good, not great. For my personal taste. Yeah. That's uh, our okay. thing with it's people's personal tastes and and um the people they have to play with and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I read through the rules and I was like, this seems this seems fine, but I think that was another reason that I decided to trade it away. Wildcatters. You wanna be an oil baron? <laughs> uh I this one <laughs> This this was in my excitement for uh, Capstone Games was purchased because the production looked very cool. It's like a fully wood production, and I liked the way that you would use other people's infrastructure to benefit yourself. There's a lot of cool things. Um, oh. These storage containers are mine, but they come with the game, I guess now. Um, but they will be whoever they will be is going to buy this. Yeah. yeah. Um, why are we getting rid of this one? It looks pretty cool. You're interested in it? Um, yeah. I don't know how it plays. Um. Right. <laughs> I own that. It's hard to to get buy-in, but it's solid. Ooh. And that's kind of, that's been my, and that's what I've heard about it. I've heard it's a decent game. We've already talked about Senji. We talked about Senji. If anyone was wondering what it looks like, that's what it looks like. You, um, you should pick, um, uh, you sh are you going to go through all of them? I I'm just saying you should pick them more strategically. <laughs> so I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll speed in here. The Arrival by Martin Wallace. I never hear about this game. I thought the art was cool. Again, I think it's an impulse purchase. Um, it's a semi-co-op. Stacy Everdale, what did I miss? Sorry, step away because my uh, oh, your hand. Just it up. sounds like there's no wall of butts tonight. Yeah, I pro I probably will fall asleep before the wall of butts hits. Um, um, what did I miss? We're gonna try and play this game before the swap meet. We'll see. Maybe. Well, I mean, I would like to, but oh, it's two hours. Maybe I won't be able to. <laughs> but maybe we can just hold on to it. I don't know. Um. um so this, yeah, this one's your work. I always like the idea of semi-co-op. Co -op. It usually sells me. It's got the Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. But, yeah, it's never, never no one's ever talked about it. Is this the speed? <laughs> this is the speed, yeah. Holy this smoke. is the speed round. So the pile in front is what rough, you're trying to I... play before Saturday. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes. Uh, yeah, probably not happening. Because <laughs> uh, before Sunday, Saturday is completely booked right now so all we have is tomorrow and we have a baby so uh city of remnants maybe we should get a sitter and try to get get through <laughs> as many as we can um heard good things but had it for a long time got a lot of games in the same category area control type stuff maracaibo i love great western trail and i figured why do i need maracaibo and great western trail we don't have room yep um also, the theme's a bit problematic. Um, Inner Compass, we played it once. Um, 
And it was fun. <gasps> Just Star says, I can definitely teach you Magnus Storm tomorrow if you want. <gasps> oh, this is compelling. Around this time, Jassar? Yeah, I mean, I'm real. Magnusar might be our one and only one that we can try and... The Magnificent we might be able to. That's true. Yeah. Uh, if Jassar teaches us Magnusar, then you only need to learn Magnificent. Uh, Birdo says, have you played Wild Times? We haven't played it yet. This is on our list of we should try and play it before to decide if we should get rid of it. I don't know if we'll have time. Yeah. We haven't been able to play it yet. Yeah. Uh, Sierra West, I love the idea of it, but the idea is there's like four games in here, and then that just overwhelmed me. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is, if I can't even get some of these games played once, I'm not getting this played four times, even though it does look interesting. The art's cool. Uh, here's one we've actually played. This is basically like Andrew just talking to his games he didn't play, and it's like just telling you, you know, like, you're a fun game, game, <laughs> but, you know. I liked this. We played it a little bit wrong the first time we played it, which I think is why it wasn't as fun for Pia. Pia really didn't like it. Um, there's a co-op mode she promised that we would play before, <laughs> before <laughs> Sunday, so maybe I'm going to put on that. <laughs> we'll see. It's a short game anyway. Um, I don't remember how it was played wrong, but... So I backed that Kickstarter that Stonemeyer Games did a long time ago, <laughs> where they did um, all the, the nice resources. The But then every game after that came with nice resources, so I've never used these. They just shuffle around our house. There's just little pieces of, like, um, gems that just, like, randomly will pop up. Ever, or Stacy says, open it! And, um, Bruno, have you played Wildcatters? So, like, there's, like, bread. The thing is, what if I was a kid, I would love this stuff. I love mini things. I there's love... Real so, metal. So here irons, are some... Whoa. Buckets. There's buckets. There's also, you know, coffee beans. Yarns. Uh-oh, you can't really see it. It's a nice coffee bean. Um, little piles the of The idea grain. is that they can be used for anything. Meat. But I never think of it, and, um... I think also maybe, like, back in the these day... These are the gems that you're talking about. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Back in the day, when, when I really cute. didn't like... Yeah, everything was cute, but also, um, bef when I really didn't love games, because you probably didn't pick... Like, I didn't play enough games to, like, know that I was gonna have fun. I, I think it was more important that they looked and felt nice. Like, that that was going to make or break it. So you bought this in, a, in in desperation to try to convince me that I like I would like to play this game. Mm. Birdo says, they have played Wildcatters. They only played it once and got, before they got rid of it and can't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they do seem really cool. They are. They are very cool. They're hard to store because they're kind of a strange shape. We, again, most games come with custom shaped wood pieces now. Or, are, or, uh, not, yeah. Or we just don't need them as much. Also, I feel like I thought you got rid of those. So it was actually funny when I saw them because there's been games where I'm like, I want to play with our custom pieces. Oh, really? But that's the thing is that I'm more detail oriented than Andrew. And in terms of, like, your, 100% uh, of your brain power is, like, learning the game and teaching the game. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you're going to do is, like, go off and look for the little pieces that's and fair. swap them out. And I don't help with setup or tear down, so that's on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jessar says, Sierra West was a like but not love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's kind of the space that... We're, I'm trying to get rid of the games that are in that <gasps> like but not love. Jassar says my copy copy of Coffee Traders will arrive soon. Oh hey! Did we get Coffee Traders? No. Coffee Traders is in the same weight as Arkwright. Oh okay. <laughs> well, I thought it would be. Game. I thought you would get it because of my dad. Coffee Traders. I mean, there was a lot of reasons I wanted it. <laughs> But we have so many <laughs> super heavy games, and we haven't played any of them. I ordered from my family, my local family game store, not direct. 
over nine pounds. I mean, I'm interested in concentrators. I mean, thematically, if you are, if that was what gets you to play one of these kind of heavy economic games. Well, the thing is, I don't know. What's the heaviest economic game I've ever played? I don't know if you've played any. <gasps> would it be, would, would Food Chain Magnet be my first heavy economic game? Mm-hmm. What is your favorite heavy economic game? Twilight Imperium? That's, it's not an economic game. Oh. I'm um, just thinking of heavy games. I don't know. It's a good question. I think I'm very interested in this, in them, and I keep buying them, but I can never get them to <laughs> get played. And I think that's just why they, they just, there's a revolving door of those type of games. You know? Yeah. My dad, for, for those at home, my dad is a food scientist, or was a food scientist. Um, he worked for Starbucks in the early 90s, which is why I was like, I'm interested in a coffee theme yeah. game. Stacy says, Coffee Trader's weight is 4.5 out of 5. <gasps> that, that, that's weight, like, complexity, right? That's crazy. <laughs> Just Star says, find a job in Seattle, and you'll have another gamer who likes them. <laughs> yes. We'll, we'll start looking. We'll look. Uh, you and Benita. <laughs> uh, Chaosmos, uh, which is a, hide, your, a what, game of hide and go seek. Very, very uh, unique game. What is your industry that you work in, Jassar? I'm going to start checking out job listings. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chaosmos is unique. Uh, we played it with some friends. They didn't love it. Oh. Um, I didn't play, though, right? You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I could convince him to play it again. Rune Age, it's a deck builder, an old deck builder. We've talked about it already. It's got a, a box. Wait, you're good. getting rid of Kare Kare? Yeah, you like scoff at it every time you see it. Andrew bought a game because it's a, it's, well, I'll get to it later. This is a bargain bin buy. Bargain bin buy. Don't do bargain bin buys. <laughs> Another bargain bin buy. A warning from Andrew. Andrew bought this game because there's a Filipino dish called kare kare. Mm-hmm. And so Andrew bought this game because it was named the same thing. And yeah. it has like these weird parrots on it. It wasn't the only reason. It's also published by the people who made Silk. Which I love Silk. And Silk is we one of our favorites. Um, well, let's try it. Is this good at two player? Uh, Shaolia. We played on stream. It was fun, but maybe we played it enough. I feel like I it's that one makes me sad because I feel like I have cousins in the Philippines in the Philippines who would love it. It's uh, probably one that we would have brought it. Brought yeah. The Philippines, yeah. I can't justify keeping it for like three plus years until we see them. New Salem. Uh, I, there's a, there's a we had some good memories yeah. of that game. I think there's there's hidden role games we like better. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. I like heavy econ games, but Coffee Traders, it just seems much. What's your favorite um, heavy econ game? So many people in Seattle, says AMB. This is true. <laughs> I feel like finding jobs is easy right now. Feels like a worker shortage is a pr- pretty common in big cities. Um, um, just Star says, oh, I'll private message you my resume. <laughs> um, Board Game Feast says, my friends pre-order Coffee Traders but decided he's selling it on it before it even arrives. Oh, pipeline. Oh, um, you guys need to stop. This is too many at once. <laughs> it's a <laughs> CJ <Lo> job. <laughs> um, I uh, like pipeline. All right, okay, sorry. Keep going. Oh, these are... Um, Bloom of Kilforth. I kickstarted this years and years and years ago. We were going to learn pipeline. Yeah. Uh, we have pipeline. Yeah, and I I watched the videos. I can't wait to try. Is pipeline a heavy economic game? Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, that will be my first one if I play it. Good evening, Book of Nerds. We Hi, are Book of Nerds. going through all the games that I'm trying to sell this weekend at a swap meet, and these are the games that um we are gonna try and play before Sunday. It's not gonna happen probably. But... <laughs> We're gonna play maybe one of them. Um, <laughs> This was also a bargain bin purchase. Don't do don't do bargain bin purchases. Um, just sorry, says I can also one. teach pipeline. Yes, please. It has some spatial stuff, which I do love the spatial like spatial puzzles in mm-hmm. games. Um, I like Arkwright and Sound eighteen XX. Speaking of Arkwright, speaking I've had this of for, Arkwright, um, I don't know, four years or something like that. Three or four years. Never been played. 
Never been played. I wish there was a button that I can. Like really, I said, I can, I, I I can keep, hit like violin music. Yeah, I keep ba buying these heavy economic games, thinking I'll find, I'll convince someone to play them with me. And here we are. This one may or may not. I might not be able to pull the trigger on it just because I know it's very, very good. Yeah, this Arkwright was the one that. It, that <laughs> Exclamation point, smallest ball of violin. Yeah, right. Yeah, Andrew, there, that arc rate was the one that Andrew was like, it's on the, it's in the pile right now, but I don't know if I can, I can try and sell it. I can't remember why I bought this. I think it was just the pub <laughs> publisher. Sometimes I, like, find a new publisher and I'm like, oh, I love this one game from them. They must have other good games like it. Because we really liked Silk. Yeah. We still really like stuff. This one seems fun. It's like, like the art on that race. one says Book of Nerds. On but this? does it spark joy? <laughs> I I think this pile behind us, you can't really see it, but I almost don't want to show you because it's embarrassing. Really Dead hard. of Winter, we have this one and Dead of Winter The Long Night. And I realized we can't have both. I don't know. We played a lot of Dead of Winter. Yeah. A few years ago, and really liked it. I had a great run with our friends and family. Um, I I pulled off my biggest deception in our playing Dead of Winter, and I, apparently we have two copies. I don't know these. Things. Well, we have the. It's a standalone sequel. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're different games, but the same. oh, like the same. 90% the same, but different characters. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, Yokohama, this is one I won't be sad if it doesn't sell. Because I really like the art. And it is similar to Istanbul, but a heavier Istanbul. Um, I really want to play it, but again... He don't long. have the friends. I don't have the time. The time. The time is more like a... It's the time. Um, the time, I, uh, the time so to Imperial, make new friends. Imperial twenty thirty is um, Ooh, this looks cool. One that the uh, board game garage they rave about this game, and uh, I've described it and tried to sell people on it a number of times who like heavy conflict games, and it's never happened. <laughs> Never happened. Shelf space sparks joy. <laughs> yeah, playing at conventions is a great way to try games without buying. Yeah, Ambi, I we almost didn't spend think... the money to go to conventions. <laughs> That's the thing. I feel like uh, I didn't really realize that was like a way to get that experience, and it almost sells me on the idea of conventions. Yeah. For that reason. Oh. Um, because even if we go to like a library um, on the weekends to try like a game library, it's like a a little bit of a drive. It's like a day trip for us. And then it's just usually the two of us. Like, I don't know if we could convince our friends to try out a bunch of games we were trying to decide if we want to buy. <laughs> yeah. But that's a really good idea. I almost feel like if that helps us avoid buying more games... Dragonflight is back this year in Bellevue, October. Okay. Ooh. Um, Meet new friends at local cons, says oh. Book of Nerds. There you go. Yeah, um, because the only con that we went to, it was in Vancouver, so we couldn't make, we couldn't be come friends with them. What about <gasps> Spamcom 2022? <laughs> That'd be fun. That would be uh, Concordia, this has the base game in it as well. Um, I was pretty hyped on Concordia to get it and play it and then we played it and then he didn't really I it. don't remember it yeah that's it's pretty much it there's a couple <laughs> small ones over there running a con is a different beast says Amby I don't know I believe you I feel like <laughs> we're not great logistics people no I could keynote. We, a con. we we have we have other we have other skills. Mm -hmm. Logistics is not one of them. Um, <laughs> I haven't played Dead of Winter in a long time, but we used to like it. Yeah, that's definitely I feel like how it had I feel like Dead of Winter had a moment and then and then other games came out and then people Yeah, I mean the uh, the crossroad cards of Dead of Winter I still think is one of the coolest. I don't know why it hasn't been replicated in other games. I think it's a really cool mechanic. Mm -hmm. really I feel like it also just... There's so many different people we've played that game with. So it's always like... Mm -hmm. it's, 
it's fun in that way. Yeah, although I did play uh, on Tabletop Simulator and it fell a little flat. Um, but I think that has more to do with a uh, secret role game not doing well. Wait, so here's the question. Dragon Flight is back this year. What is Dragon Flight? Is that a game store or a con? I think it's a con. Oh. Yeah. Def- um, Amy says, definitely help. My husband and I avoid buying games. And I think that's the part where I realize, like, we don't have to own everything we like. I'm realizing because there's so many times where we will bring a game to the Philippines and play it a bunch of times or maybe one or two times. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's so fun to have that memory with people. Mm-hmm. And then, like, but we don't need to own it. And I think... I think after buying so many different games, we're realizing what qualifies. Like, I like it, but I don't need to own it. Mm -hmm. Um, But. Amy says that they ran a small con, and it was kind of like planning a wedding. Whoa! A big wedding? (laughs) Working Feast, need to organize a mini Shucks since the real one is canceled this year. Yeah, Mm -hmm. boo-hoo. Shucks, I love Shucks. That was my first real, like, big board game convention I've been to, so. Um. I was like primed to go to more board game conventions and then COVID happened. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be like a West Coast gathering of friends. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really would like um, to. Oh. Butter me up! And Neo Marcos. Thanks for the follow. We do analog alerts here. This is Dr. Alan Grant from Jurassic Park. Comes out and says, Thanks for the follow, Neo Marcus, and Butter me up. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Um, but the um, I feel like I, I didn't get to go to Shucks, but I would really like to now go next time. Yeah, next time in the future. Next year, maybe they'll change when it happens during the year. Yeah. But, but thanks everyone for listening to us. Well, one hanging out with us as we had hot pot, and then um. <laughs> Uh, Butter Me Up says, the best board game of all time is Mousetrap, and that's not debatable. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been able to go to Shucks because it's always on the weekend of my brother's birthday, and when it, it wasn't, I had infants. That, there was another thing that we kept missing because it was like just a weekend that we always had something. Was it, was that, that OrcaCon or something like that? Uh, OrcaCon, yeah. Yeah. That's one we always want to go to. It's, it, it's like local in our area. Um, Butter Me Up says, I love spam. Us too. Yes. Birthday present for your brother. A ticket to Shucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can hang out, brother, at Shucks. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for hanging out. Um, we are still in the midst of kind of decluttering and cleaning up a bit. So it was kind of fun to go through these games. Andrew has kept telling me, he's like, can you double check the list of the games? Yo, chat. Is this bad? I know this one because of Madden. <laughs> I had to look at the list. <laughs> um, so we will ch- look to see who is. Who we can raid. Yeah. Let's raid. Is Atticus. Atticus is still going. Atticus is playing um Pokemon. A video game right now, but he also um pl- um plays um v- board games on stream too. So we're definitely gonna go and um say hi. So stick around for the raid and thanks so much everybody. And um we just saw might contact you about possibly te- teaching us this game if you're free tomorrow. Um. And yeah, everyone have a good night. Bye. Bye, Bye Stacy. Thanks for staying up with us. Oh, I missed. There's some people. There's some things. Oh, over. Okay. Whoops. Well, can you switch over to Atticus? <laughs>